Lauren Cantrell from Scene Stealers here at the 39th Annual Seattle International Film Festival. I've got a wonderful opportunity today to speak with the director and cast of a wonderful film that's uh, one of the few that are closing out the festival this year called Last High Heard. And um, I'm here with Mr. Dave Barbigas, Renee Props, and one of my very favorite actors I was just speaking with just before this interview, Mr. Paul Ben Victor. So thank you all for being here. I appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, my first question was for you, Dave. Uh, what, what inspired you to take a look at this side of uh, mob life? It's kind of a, a unique take looking at this sort of a forced retirement of a, a mob capital. What, what inspired you? Well, <clears throat> I, it, it was a combination. It was two things. The first thing was that I really wanted to write something that was sort of undeniably mine. That you know I could write these characters because I grew up around them and I could write that story. But the um, what what made it, uh, um, a, uh, I guess, a screenplay or a movie was a documentary that I was watching on Discovery ID about uh, Jack Falcone, uh, who's the FBI agent that infiltrated the Gambino family in the Bronx. And there was one thing he said that was very poignant, and I picked up on it right away, was that uh, this guy came home after eight years in prison, and he was trying to reclaim his rackets. And what he didn't know was that half the people that he was dealing with were informants. Um, there was FBI surveillance all over the place. He actually ended up getting sent back to prison. Um, but he said, he described him as pitiful. And, and right away I said, wait a minute, there's a movie here. Um, and I, I got uh, some memo cards, some five by seven, just started writing and writing and writing. And, and within a couple of weeks I had a, a, the first draft of the screenplay. And um, those are really the, the, the two sort of catalysts that, that inspired the movie. Well, it's definitely, it seems like a persistent theme running throughout the film. And you start off right, you know, right off the bat with Ch Chas Palminteri as, uh, you know, Big Joe's lawyer saying, you know, this isn't the same kind of, you know, family we used to have. Yeah. Ten guys get pinched, you know, nine of them are flipped for, you know, the hours yeah. out they want to deal. Absolutely. So it's, uh, it's, it definitely seems like a consistent theme running throughout the, the film that, it's just not the same for him. Things have changed. Right. And I wanted to keep it authentic. You know, I wanted to, I cast it the way I cast it because I, I figured that, you know, these, these actors playing these roles need to sort of be from New York, I guess, and, and kind of understand that world and understand how to deliver those lines and, and what they mean. Because there's so much underlying stuff to a New York accent and, yeah. and, and that world and where you're from. You know, I always tell people that New York is more about the attitude than it is about the accent. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we had a bunch of New Yorkers playing the roles to a T, so it was, it was amazing. That's awesome. Um, I was going to ask you, what kind of shoot was this in, in terms of schedule? How much time did you have, and where were you? We um, we shot in Middle Village, Queens, um, and it was an 18-day shoot. Oh, wow. With um, one, uh, a half day of, uh, of B-roll. Um, fast, we finished early. But, again, it's a testament to the actors. I mean, you know, you know these guys, you know, Renee and... Paul and, and the rest of the, the gang, I mean, there was really no shortage of, of veteran experience. So they just came prepared and, and it was, they made my job so easy. Well, I mean, speaking of your actors, Renee, um, you played Joe's daughter, Rita. I did. And I thought it was a fascinating role just because this isn't uh, the run-of-the-mill sort of subservient, obedient mob woman. This is a very much a modern woman who's right. kind of breaking the mold from what you'd see in this genre. Um, is that something that attracted you to the role? It did. It did. It was. It was really. Um, when I first read the script, I thought this is a little. It's. It's really out of my comfort zone because um, the character is, you know, part Sicilian. Um, I don't want to give away the movie, but she has a lot of personal issues that are much different from me. Um, so it was a real character piece for me, and I, I was really fortunate. I had the luxury to live with the Panapintos, which is an Italian family in Queens, and so I got to actually stay with them and really kind of absorb the culture. I was just immersed in it, which for an actor, you know, that's a dream to have that luxury. She don't always get that. Yeah. And the writing was just, it, it read to me like a wonderful play, and you don't see that a lot in screenplays. And so when he asked me to do it, at first I was very reluctant, and I thought I have to really see if I can wrap my head around this character. Because um, I was born in Oklahoma and raised in Arizona, so mm -hmm. I'm really, really different from the character. Uh, but it was it was amazing, and it was easy because yeah. the writing was already there. It was it was just already there? It was beautifully written, and then to work with Paul Servino, 
was amazing. You know, the whole cast, it was just, it was so easy. It was the easiest job I've ever had. It was like peaceful and fun and we had a real freedom, you know, to really kind of with, I always say that David Rodriguez is an actor's director because you really feel safe and you can just go. Mm -hmm. And that actually um, kind of brings me into what I was going to ask you next. You know, how, how was it that you were able to kind of wrap your head around this character? Because as you said, I mean, she's very different from you and uh, the, the movie sets it up that her and her father have quite the history and a lot, like 20 years has passed since they've seen each other. So right. where did you kind of go as far as, you know, plumbing that emotional depth to, to balance that sort of, you know, you want to be in control, but at the same time, there's, there's right. a lot of stuff boiling under the surface. A lot going on. Well, I have, I have a friend that's similar, has, is very similar to a girl I grew up with to some of the issues that Rita has. I don't want to give it away. Yeah, sure, know? sure. <laughs> um, and so I, I kind of, on that, on that issue of the character, I really, really knew that part of her. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, I just, I just dived in. I mean, I'm, I'm like a method at heart. So, mm -hmm. you know, I just really went all in as far as the culture and the whole Italian thing. Mm -hmm. and, and then Paul Servino played, played my father, of course. And that was um, a really great opportunity for me because a lot of my own personal issues, I had lost my father very young when I was 16. He had uh, brain cancer for 11 years. So it was, it was really, you know, um, an incredible experience because it was very, very personal for me. Sure. You know, the Rita feeling very abandoned by her father and then coming back together with him. Oh, sure. No, that's fascinating. That's yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, now, Paul, your character, uh, Vinny, he acts as sort of a, a, a bridge between these two worlds because he was there when Big Joe was on the outside and was kind of a big shot, and he's still, you know, very much there when, when he's out. And uh, as far as your character, um, during the events in Last I Heard, you know, how, how did you approach uh, the character in light of this sort of uh, this balance between what he's juggling from what he used to know and what he has to deal with now? He seems to, like I said... He doesn't quite know where to stand, much like the, the Michael Rappaport character. He wants to show respect, but, you know, at the same time, he's, he's got this, you know, memory of what this guy used to be, and it's certainly no longer. So I guess that's our, I guess what my question is, how did you approach this character as far as, where does he land? I mean, this guy, he wants to, he wants to be respectful, but at the same time, you know, he, you know, 20 years on, this isn't the same Big Joe that, uh, you know, walked in before. For me, uh, I just sort of dive into the world. I don't. For this character, I mean, I, you know, I know Dave very well as my best friend. Uh, I know Michael Rappaport. He's a very good friend. I've known him for a long time. I know Paul Sabino. So I know Johnny Williams, Johnny Roastbeef. I know Billy. I know the guys we hung out. Actually, all the Delhi guys. I know them from a long time. So there was no getting to know period. Yeah. We sat down, cut some prosciutto on a machine, and learned how to do that. And, uh, you know drank some coffee and then you hung out with your friends yeah. and so in that sense you know you get a hand of the day he puts together a group of people that either have the chemistry or uh, gonna have it really quickly or already have it like we did so there was no like approach yeah. I just showed up put on a funny hat <laughs> and I was a dilly guy <laughs> but that's kind of what I do you know I've done sort of so many different things I just sort of Enter in, and, uh, and it'd be, if it's a, if it's a comfortable environment, the character sort of just is there, you know. It's it's something that wasn't a stretch, you know. It's a yeah. New York deli guy, yeah. So, it, who's a family guy? Who, who's, who's from the neighborhood? Mm. It's kind of who I am, who we all are. So, it, the support system, it just the chemistry, the sparks were flying when they needed to be, and then it was just. A sense of reality yeah. when, it, when it needed to be yeah. had. And watching the film a few times, I, I got this. You know, these guys have been there. You get the sense they really have been there for many years. Yeah, yeah. And that's actually what's going to be my next question. So let me just say, when Joe, well, there's one scene when Joe walks in, and you know, I, I I know Paul Savino, but I'm a big fan of him. So when he walks in at one point, I remember going, "Wow, yeah. there he is!" And it, there he was, you know. And so. That, that that's a moment that just sort of comes out yeah. that seems authentic and it is you know we, we, we all felt that way here comes you know Paul Sabino as, as the uh, the mob boss back from prison yeah 
eventually happens, yeah. So as far as what brought you into the project, you just touched on it a little bit. Was it just a matter of, of knowing Dave as, and knowing the script? And um, was it something that when you read it, it was just uh, something that you felt like, I know this is a project that kind of is outside the milieu of the normal We, we work on, I've been in every one of his movies, and I will be in every one of his movies. <laughs> so it's loyalty. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll have to have a sit-down conversation. No, seriously, uh, I've been in, he's done three features, I've been in all of them, and if there's something in there that makes sense and it's yeah. right, I, it, you know, that's, we like to work, you know, we just, he just helped me uh, adapt a, a play into a screenplay that I'm, so, you know, we, we, we support each other however we can. But, yeah, you like to work with your friends. Yeah. So this made sense. Yeah, absolutely. And as far as that's concerned, I know you, you wrote the script for this as well. When you were writing it, did you have any of, you know, any actors in mind? I mean, did was Paul Sorbino someone that you had thought might, you know, work for this role? Or did you kind of approach it as, you know, script first and then the practicalities? Of no, I mean, I, I definitely had, had those guys in mind um, early on. There's really only five guys that could play that role. Yeah. But I think Sorvino has this sort of vulnerability, this kind of like sad, simpatico thing going on, you know, where you really, regardless of what he does or what he says, um, how outlandish or inappropriate it may be, you still want to root for him. Mm -hmm. You still want to want it to be okay somehow, some way, this guy will come around. So I felt that way about Sorvino kind of early on. And he was attached to the movie for two years before I got it made. Oh, okay. Um, and then Mike uh, read it, Rappaport. He read it uh, about three years before I got it made, or two and a half, three years before. Uh -huh. And I'd see him up at Running Canyon in LA, and you know, we, we ran into each other two or three times he's like hey when are you making the movie when are you making the movie I'm like I'm getting closer I'm getting closer and, and finally when the day came that you know that we uh, we got the green light uh, I called him right away and I said hey man it's it's happening um, and you know he, uh, he he was he did the movie and you know so happy it seems like um, he, he the central thesis of the of the narrative had a lot to do with family about loyalty about uh, respect and, and about maintaining sort of a, a sense of pride mm -hmm. within a community. Um, how did you how did you work that into the script as far as bringing that out both through the characters and the plot? Because like I said, it seemed to come up not uh, not at, at peak moments throughout the movie. You know, there was no monologue about why family is important or anything like that. But it definitely seemed to be an underlying current. Is that something you were trying to work in throughout the film? And is that part of what the, the story you were trying to tell? Yeah, I mean, it, it, there's definitely um, you know an underlying you know, undercurrent of that that topic in in just the way that the characters behave. Um, whether they're mobsters or family men or, you know, just a working class guy. In that culture, in that world, there's always um, a sense of family, you know, and, and a very strong um, affinity to making sure that you take care of your family and you, you know, I, I speak to my mother just about every day. Um, and and if I if two days go by, forget about it. I'll catch Almighty help. But but um, but it, but that's important to me. Yeah. It's important to me to to speak to my mother, to speak to my kids on a daily basis because uh, that's what 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 it's all about for me. It's all about family. So when you write these characters and you write the dialogue, although it, I didn't hit any one particular thing over the head, yeah. um, it was there. Yeah. It was very. You know, it's it's prevalent. You know, there's hugging and there's kissing and there's this and that. And you know, I think one of the one of the scenes that gets me early on is when Mr. Joe uh, doesn't give Rita what she wants, which is just a simple three words, you yeah. know. And and he just sits there and kind of looks at her like, I don't do that. Yeah, that's you know? not my thing. <laughs> and and that's and it's not a, a it's a, it's not a scene that on on the on paper is meant to make you cry. But when you see her face, like, oh man, like this is this was stupid. I shouldn't have asked. Yeah. You feel like, oh my god, like I I want to jump in and hug her because I feel so bad for her that yeah. he's not. So I think a, a, a lot of that is is um, again, it's just it, it's really the the undercurrent of the film. It's it's family, it's loyalty, it's respect, um, and and having to navigate you know through that world with a guy like Mr. Joe. 
um, is, is, is it's kind of slippery. Yeah. What's, uh, what's next for the film? Are you guys headed to any other festivals after this, or um, do you have any plans as far as... Well, right now, we, uh, our executive producer uh, was at uh, our world premiere uh, yesterday, and uh, the audience was, uh, it was encouraging. So we're going to do a couple of festivals between now and the end of the summer, um, but the goal right now is, is to get it released. And, um, and I think we all collectively decided that, that we do want to uh, fight for a limited theatrical. Um, and we'd love to try to get Paul Servino some, some acclaim yeah. for the role. No, I, I, it's, it's so uh, wonderful to see him in a, in a lead role. He's done so much supporting work over the years. And um, yeah, if there's any question of whether or not he could carry a movie, I think you answered it because it's certain, certainly in a, uh, I'm sure. I mean, a, a resounding yes. I'm answer. sure you'll appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks so much for, for taking a few minutes to sit with me. I, I yeah. really appreciate it. And um, best of luck with the film and, and um, the, the future festival circuit. I, I really do hope you guys get the, the release you're looking for because I did enjoy the film. I thought it was wonderful. And uh, it's just a really interesting take on a, a genre I think a lot of people have seen before. So thank you. Well done. Thank, thank you, you so for much. having us. Absolutely. Thank, thank you. you. All right.